Welcome to another uh, Massachusetts Pirate News. It is Sunday, June 26th, John, June 16th. Boy, I'm a little tired. Uh, at 7.29 p.m. Um, we have two, two stories to discuss today. But first, I uh, want to thank everyone who said hello to uh, us at our table at Boxborough Pfeiffer's Day. Thanks to the folks behind Boxborough's uh, Boxborough Pfeiffer's Day for giving us the opportunity to meet people. We had lovely conversations with um, many people there who had never heard of us. Uh, we chatted with some Libertarian Party folks as well, uh, and the Democrats and Republicans were were there. And there are lots of, you know, there was the Boxborough Birding Group and the Boxborough Historical Society, and uh, they've even stopped and started an Acton Boxborough local news site. Uh, which is a good thing, and we highly encourage that because private equity is killing off all the local news sites. So with that, uh, the only other event that we have scheduled coming up is June 29th, which is a Saturday at noon. We'll have our democracy and dog food meeting. Uh, so if you'd like to help uh, work on the tech side of things, uh, we'd love your help. So uh, there'll be information about that. Um, it, it'll be, it, it'll, it'll be at our big blue button instance. Um, and, uh, there'll be notices if they're not already there on masspirates.org. So, uh, with that, Joe, you had some update for us on shot spotters. Uh, before we uh, get into that, sorry, sorry, Joe, I do want to, regarding Pfeiffer's Day, I also want to do give some, uh, kudos and props to Dominic for coming down and, uh, tabling with us it was great he's a great guy very cool to meet him thank you for uh for coming out and hanging out back to you joe thanks for that steve yeah so uh shot spotter is i think we lost you there joe Oh no, they killed Kenny. <laughs> Hello. Can you there you now? go. Thank you. There you go. Okay. S technical difficulties. Um so Shot Spotter is apparently fighting back um and saying that all these polls about their services are misleading and that uh basically their product is so much better, it does what it's supposed to do. It listens in on everything. And, uh, you know, I mean, the data is what the data is. And it's not like every single person I know, especially every officer I've ever met, they don't want more work. They would love to have something that makes their life easier. And if it made their life easier, then they would be all for it. But, you know, if even the law enforcement agencies are like, nah, nah, dude this isn't working this is creating us so much more paperwork so much more work and there's it's not even picking up anything serious um from what i understood even cars backfiring it was picking that up and saying shots fired from cars so um sure it picks up shots fired but still hasn't really stopped any of the mass shootings lately like the one that just happened in Rochester at the splash. I think it was Rochester at the splash pad. They did catch that guy, by the way, which is a good thing. But as far as shot spotter goes, they're kind of being the snake oil type salesman. And basically like, no, our product's great. It's great. It will restore your hair you buy it. Yeah, I mean, in terms of um, like just you know mass shootings, uh, the most recent one I've I'm aware of is uh, happened um, this very morning in Methuen. Uh, apparently, there was a car club party and um, some altercation ensued, and seven people were shot. But at any rate, I, I think the shot spotter story is you know you could kind of fi perhaps file that under the what else would you expect them to say category <laughs> um you know the i you know i understand the pushback and they're entitled to push back but you know 
in terms of how mun municipalities, meaning i.e. their customers, are voting with their pockets, uh, Chicago is canceling a major contract. Somerville is considering doing the same as as are others. Um, you know, I, I think you know this is perhaps a good idea that has not proven itself in practice and is possibly turned into you know another excuse to over police poor and minority communities. Well, I mean, there's a lot of things that are good on paper and good even on small effects and in laboratories. But then when you try and produce it to a mass scale, uh, really just doesn't pan out. Um, it's kind of like the that theory where you can use light to evaporate water. That would work great in desalination plants. And that would work really, really good. It's a technology that's been around for a little while. And it's really, really good. But producing it on an industrial scale they run into a lot of problems with it. Um, so it's just like one of those things that, yeah, on a small scale, sure, it probably does work great, but not in a busy, bustling city. <laughs> just saying. Yep, yep. So, uh, so I, you know, the good intentions and, and roads and stuff and all that, all that jazz, so... That, that's kind of my final thoughts on that. Um, gentlemen? Take your microphones down, man. <laughs> so, Steve, you had some news uh, from about Meta from uh, Europe. Yeah, so this is uh, from the, you know, there's good news and bad news department. Um, so Meta has been planning to use uh, users' posts and... Uh, as training data for artificial intelligence, large language models. And originally they were going to roll this out to everyone, but the EU pushed back. Um, you know, 11 countries complained to the EU data protection agencies and they started a conversation with Meta. So, you know, for a while it was going to be, well, we're gonna do this in the EU, but people will have a chance to opt out. And now they're just not going to do this in the EU at all. So, which is a bit of a, a bit of a victory. Um, you know, Meta, of course, is they seem a little bit pissed, um, and they're calling this a step backwards for European AI innovation. Like, of course, this is what Meta would say. But you know, I guess there's going to be continuing conversations to work with uh, between them and the data protection authorities. And basically, the Europeans' goal is they want to make sure that there are adequate privacy protections built in from the onset. And you know, rather than trying to tack them on later, it's like you need to do this first. This is this is a good thing. This is a good thing. Um, one of the things I wasn't able to, you know, the article was not clear about is what kind of posts it was going to be used on, uh, whether it's public ones or if they would be including like things to friends only or private messages. Um, of course, now the the bad news is elsewhere in the world, well, we're, they're just going to, you know, slurp it up with a straw. And that includes here in the US and presumably uh, the UK, which is no longer part of the European Union. <laughs> Yay, Brexit. Um, European privacy groups, um, specifically NYO, for example, NYOB, which is headed up by Max Schrems, you know, they welcome this decision, but they're going to continue to monitor it. Um, suppose, for what I gather, Facebook's privacy policy has not been updated to reflect this change. And that's something that has to happen for it to be legally binding in the EU. So a little more, you know, a little more, uh, you know, stuff about artificial intelligence and surveillance capitalism for y'all. Oh, the surveillance capitalism, mm -hmm. tracking your every movement to sell you more stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and from the government to make even more profits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, there's, you know, I would be very curious to know what, you know, there are, there are a number of, aside from Facebook, there are a number of data brokers. You know, Facebook is, you know, they've gotten themselves into hot water with, um, I'm spacing on the name, but basically allowing um, 
third parties to slurp up private information and then they do with it whatever they do with it. Um, you know, for a while, at one point in time, um, something called p3p.xml used to be a thing. It was like uh, an attempt to standardize a machine readable privacy policy and, um, you know, websites could post this and, you know, it would, idea was it would make it easier for users to see how their data would be used rather than reading through this big ginormous pile of legalese. Uh, for a while, Facebook had one of these, and it just said something like "ha ha." <laughs> um, so they're, you know, they're they're totally they have a history of flaunting this sort of stuff. Privacy protection is not good for their business model, and so they're, you know, it's not something they're in terribly interested in doing. Um, but kudos to the to the European regulators for, you know, give give it, giving them some skin in the game. Well, you know, as far as security goes, I think the EU is a little bit ahead of us. But, you know, there's there's a couple of things that I think we do a little bit better over here, like not have health care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was thinking the First Amendment, but yeah, I know. Yeah, we do. We're number one. <laughs> Third world deals with the first world conditions. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Most expensive healthcare in the world with <laughs> the worst outcomes. Yes. Yep. <laughs> declining, declining life expectancy. Yay, US. You number one. Number one. <laughs> uh, so uh <clears throat> thank you, uh Joe and Steve. Um, uh, we fo we hope that uh, you enjoyed this bit of news and our take on it. As always, you can find us at masspirates.org. Uh, you know the drill. Uh, we'll hopefully see you next week. Uh, if not, you know, there's always the 29th. And if you know of any good tabling opportunities, by all means, send us an email, info at masspirates.org. We're always looking for new places to uh, show the flag, uh, to fly the flag, and um, and tell people about the Pirate Party. So with that, we hope you all have a wonderful time. Uh, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Joe. And uh, we are heading out. Have a great week, folks. <laughs>